Hey everyone, Russ Johns. I want to uh, talk a little bit more about email marketing strategies and the reason why today. You know, building a community is not an easy task. It's not a simple task every single time. Once you get it set up and you get systems in place, there are occasions where it does, you know, the workflow does become easier. When you first begin, it, uh, it seems overwhelming, really challenging. So I wanted to, you know, make sure that we identify, you know, what you're doing and why you're doing it and what, why is it important to build a community and, uh, you know, what's the goal? And the goal is value. You know, you're building, you're building a business. You want to have that business to the point where you're either going to hand it off to somebody, you're going to grow, you have, uh, you're selling the business, you're going to sell the business. There's something that you want to do with this business. And if it's perpetual income or if it's residual income or if, or if it's passive income, there's all kinds of goals. And one of the things that you need to be very clear about is what is the goal that you're pursuing? You know, what is it that you want to do with this goal? And my argument, my, my position on this is that anything that you can do to add value to your business is a good thing. And one of the most valuable things after having employees, well-trained employees that are passionate about your value, your business, and your goals are clients, customers, you know, people that are passionate about your business, about being involved in your business, about you serving them, what your goods and services are, what you're looking to pursue. And the best way to build that community is to leverage your time and understand that you can't be in all places at all times and you need to make sure that you have the opportunity to continue that conversation on a regular basis even if you're not in the room. You know, one of the things that I teach clients is the ability to have that conversation and it's when the client wants to have the conversation, not when you want to have the conversation with the client. And there's a big difference. It's called remove the, removing the friction. And if you, ha if you have the opportunity to send out an email or a newsletter update or, you know, call it whatever you want, you, you have that opportunity to create something, send it out, and allow people to achieve um, that connection with you Anytime they want to achieve that connection with you. So, you know, that that's the way you extend your reach in your business. You know, you can only reach and achieve so many phone calls in the day. You only have so many so many hours that you, you can actually work on building relationships. You know, the other part, you know, there's still things that have to be done, you know. Um, you know, work that has to get completed, tasks and projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So extend your reach through your email list. And what that does is increases the value of the organization, the value of the company, and the value of your business in the local economy or national economy. The other thing is, is use email to build your brand. Extend your day and build your brand is, is you know, hand in hand going to be the top two things that, uh, you know, among other things that you really have an opportunity to enjoy over time. And this is, you know, to use the analogy, it's, it's that, you know, that dripping faucet will eventually fill up a bucket, you know, a drop at a time. You know, the ocean is only one drop at a time. So eventually, and it seems overwhelming when you first begin because it just seems like a lot of work that doesn't seem to have an end in, end in place. However, there is an end in place. There is an end in mind and there is a goal that has to be attached to that. And the goal is that you build your brand and you extend your day with the activities that you put into your list. 
And as you develop your system and your workflow and everything else, it's not another thing that you have to do as part of your business. It'll be part of the process. It'll be part of the extension of what you already do in your business. And once you get that workflow down and it becomes part of your part of your daily activities, then it becomes so much easier to maintain that communication and that connection with the clients. You know, the other thing that uh, is a benefit of having an email list and having a list that you can share and distribute and information, it, you know, if you went to a speaking engagement and you had 30 people in a room, that would be great. If you had a list of, you know, 5,000, that's that's like having a conversation. It's say, for instance, 50% of those open it up. That's 2,500 people that you're having a conversation with at, at different moments in time. And you don't have to be there. You can share information and you can share your personality. You can share your brand authenticity. You can, you know, the transparency. However you want to position your brand will be available to you in an email platform. So make sure that you you have the position of, you know, creating this, this idea about who you are and who you are in the business community. Get very fi- focused. If you're a niche product, you need to niche to the degree that you can and identify the messages that uh, attach to that niche and then be very consistent over time with how you share that information. And eventually, as you build your community, you know, and everybody's a fan and you're growing, you know, it's, it's like a musician in the basement. Eventually, you know, if they do it consistently over time, eventually they're going to be on stage. And it's all about converting the contacts into clients. And it's all about clients into cash and your revenue and your business and your grow. And it's about providing quality quantity and value to the community it's not about uh, you know overnight success it's about having that conversation over and over and over again and email allows you to have a conversation you know a hundred times a thousand times a day versus uh, one-on-one with a phone call with a friend so think in those terms thinking those opportunities when you're in the in the trenches, you know, and you're doing data cleanup and you're deleting people that are unsubscribing from your list, you know, don't think about the downside. Think think about the long-term growth and the long-term community that uh, is involved in in you know your long-term goals. So a thousand new contacts per year. If you convert ten percent of those, you know, say for instance, that's five thousand contacts per year. You convert ten percent of those. You know, easy math. Five years. That's five hundred new clients. So five hundred new clients, and, and over, uh, you know, a five-year period can make a big difference because along the way you're going to have those 500 clients they're going to be happy clients and you're going to convert those clients into influencers and the influencers will build your business because you can actually assist them and help along the way and providing that uh, that activity you know helping you share your message share your value and do everything that you need to do so so you have 5,000 qualified leads, 500 clients, and say, for instance, you say, okay, well, I'm going to diversify. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to hand this business off to somebody and I'm going to sell it and I want an, an equity stake. If you had 5,000 qualified leads in a database and you've been connecting with those folks over a period of five years and you have 500 clients, that is a lot of value in your book of business. There are people that will buy those lists without buying your business. Those, you know, anything that you can have, uh, you you know, and and that's not necessarily what I would suggest. However, if you have a a community of 5,000 
qualified leads over the period of five years. And let's just take a thousand, a thousand a year, and you can you can actually build that relationship with five thousand qualified leads and five hundred clients. You know, and you get them into stages. You build a you build a relationship. You build a communication. They know, like, and trust you. And all of a sudden, you know, the business is developing to the point where you have a a, a very large book of business. And so that's a simple equation and you can play with the numbers any way you want in your business. You can actually utilize some of the numbers that you're using now and it can go up or down. I, you know, if you're a solopreneur or a small entrepreneur in a small business, 500 clients may be way beyond what you have the capacity to deliver service for. So you just have to understand, okay, well, how far do I want to grow how far do I want to go? And what is it that I need to have in place as, um, as the end result? So be very clear on your, your goals and your aspirations. And value is the reason you want to manage your community. It's increasing the value of that community. Every time you have somebody that is either, you know, they like, they like you, they know you, they trust you they're going to recommend you beyond anyone else. And the way that you stay on top of mind is building that communication with them, making sure they understand, hey, this is something that you can do. Here, I know somebody that can do that, and you're the person that they recommend. Building value, developing systems, and systems, say, let's just use our 5,000 contact analogy right now. Systems, that's the only way to manage 5,000 contacts is, you know, building a system that you can do this. Any business is a systems. You know, franchises are developed from systems. You know, you go into a McDonald's in, you know, Oklahoma and Ontario and, uh, you know, Houston, Texas, it's pretty much the same system in every single location. And that's the only way you can manage contacts of uh, of any magnitude. And having those contacts are, that's, that's the sauce, the secret sauce in building value in your business. You know, in engaging those contacts during the journey, you know, where you're headed, what you're doing, and why you're doing it. Your attitude equals your altitude. And so you need to make sure that, you know, you have the end in mind when you're trudging through the data in the beginning. Because it's not an easy, simple step to just make it happen overnight. You know, these things don't, uh, they don't happen just automatically. So... We really need to make sure that we understand, hey, this is what it's going to take. This is why we're doing it. And, and this is what's next. This is, you know, what's the next step? Well, the next step is next we're going to build a system. We're going to use the system. We're going to cultivate those contacts. We're going to build a community. And those communities are going to be part of our engagement process. So let's talk about key steps, T tips for um, tips for engagement. You know, let's go after the let's go after the, the the golden nuggets, the nuggets of knowledge here. Tips for engagement. So scrub your list. You know, if if you have uh, if you have five thousand people on your list, that means you probably had twice that many people over time engaged in your list and dropped off your list and changed and move, you know, people move positions, people change, you know, there's always something that goes, uh, you know, changes over time and you have to really uh, meet people where they are in their day. And uh, every message is going to be a little different. So just engaging in your audience is going to help scrub your list and create several lists you know, some people are interested in some things and other people are interested in, in something a little different. So 
Do what you can to meet them on their terms. Number two, develop different messages. You know, for each stream, as you go through this, you'll create different streams for your lists. And you want to be able to have those streams develop and that conversation, you know, and the continuity stay in place as a result of having these conversations. So please think about that as you go through the process of building your lists, building your, you know, each incremental segment of your list and how that evolves over time. And then, you know, today's mobile world, you know, 1.4 billion smartphones were sold in 2014. So the majority of these messages are going to be read or consumed on a mobile device. And one of the things that uh, you really want to consider is how can I make this uh, easier to access, clear to understand, and, and uh, available on a mobile device. So that's one way to stay engaged. And get creative. There's always kinds of things that uh, you know you can do to think outside the box when you when you talk about mobility. Number four, make sure your subject line, your preheader, and your call to action are all consistent. You know, uh, I see a lot of spam that you know in emails and even from reputable people now and then that their subject line, their preheader, and their call to action are inconsistent. And, you know, this is an ongoing process. There's no magic combination. There's no magic words. There's no secret sauce here. It's it just taking the time to go through the process, finding out what resonates with your audience and discovering that, that, that process. And just be who you are and share what you want to share because that's ultimately what people want to know. Who am I dealing with? What am I dealing with? What's the personality? This, this concept that I share with the, the, the traffic circle and the unique brand personalities, that's, that's the whole un underlying impact of you know, creating uh, and sharing the personality that you already have. So that's, that's something you need to consider when you're developing every single message that goes out. You know, make it fun, make it enjoyable and personalize it. Don't be afraid to, of being authentic. You know, you are who you are and those that like you will like what you do. And those that don't are probably not the ones that you want to have as clients anyway. And that's okay. We're not everything to everyone. So personalize your message and, and separate those folks out into people that want to be your client and want to be associated with what you're doing and believe in your cause and you believe in your, your goals and your, your personality. And uh, uh, they, they gra gravitate to you, you in your business to do exactly what you want to do. And ultimately, bonus round, test, monitor, and analyze. You know, ultimately, you know, some of these messages, you know, I've sent out thousands of messages and some of these messages that I thought would just, just be amazing, you know, they'd share and everything else that everybody would love them. It doesn't happen. It doesn't always happen. And, uh, you know, what I believe, you know, might be great may not necessarily always be great in terms of what resonates with the audience. So as you narrow your audience and you, and you identify who exactly is your ideal client and you can actually start directing things there, the only way you're going to be able to direct them fully is to test and monitor and, and watch the analytics as you go, go through the process. So there again, Russ Johns, and I rent my brain out on a regular basis to businesses that need to think outside the box. And you can track me down on Twitter. Follow me on Facebook. Love to help. And if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. And 
you enjoy your day.